Hello everybody, welcome back. I wanted to take the time today to show you all of the books that I have acquired during quarantine, during this global situation that is happening right now. I'm gonna go in month by month. For me, the situation and the lockdown happened in March. I live in the United States, so we really started honing in on things in March. So at that time, I didn't purchase a lot of things in March, but I did start purchasing a little bit at a time in April. You'll see a little bit of a spike in June because things were starting to get a little bit better and then a dip and then uh, September I went a little ham with the online shopping but it's fine let's just get into it so in the month of April I purchased two books the first one is Verity by Colleen Hoover this is a dark romance mystery thriller I actually saw I believe it was Kayla from Books and Lala talk about this book I've only read one Colleen Hoover before I know that Pe that people have mixed feelings about her. I've read one of her romances and I enjoyed it. I read Ugly Love and I wanted to try her thriller because I've heard this is really good from people who like Colleen Hoover and since I've read one and I liked it, I wanna give this one a go. I'm not a, the biggest romance reader so I figured I would try that one with a twist. I have not read that one yet. And the second book I picked up was Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, mostly because I saw this cover and I have always had the intention of reading it, but I pick up classics very slowly. But I saw this cover, this is the Vintage Classics Edition, and I figured I would give it a go. But hmm, here we are in October and I haven't yet, so. Now, moving on to May. I bought five books in the month of May. First up, we have Riley Sager's current collection, minus one, but in May, it was his current collection. These are all mystery thrillers, adult mystery thrillers, but they are very accessible if you read YA and you wanna get into adult thrillers. I think these are definitely accessible for YA readers. The first one I have here is Final Girls. This is his first written work and it follows our main character who is the quote unquote final girl, which is a very popular horror and thriller trope, which is to have the last girl standing after a bunch of people are murdered. And it follows one of these final girls who survived like a cabin in the woodsy kind of attack where she was there with all of her friends for a birthday or something like that. And there was a murderer on the loose and she was the only one that survived. And so it kind of follows her because she doesn't really remember every single detail that happens. And there's actually another final girl that gets lumped with her a lot in the media, gets in touch with her and it kind of like triggers a lot of these things going on. Then we have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This is about a girl, I guess another kind of final girl, but a younger girl that goes to a sleepaway camp for like a summer camp. I don't think for the whole summer, but maybe. And she rooms with three other girls and those three girls go missing and she's the only one left behind. And we're flash forwarding to years later where she gets invited to come back and teach at this camp and kind of unraveling the mystery of what happened to the girl. Girls. This one was good. I think it's probably my least favorite Riley Sager, but I still did enjoy like the aesthetics of it. And then his last one that I picked up was Lock Every Door, which follows a young girl. Mm, she's like college age and she sees an advertisement for an apartment sitting job that's like ridiculously high paid for only a couple of months and she really needs money. So she takes up the offer and this apartment is in this like really old historic building in New York City and there are Come to find out there are other apartment sitters, but she's not really allowed to talk to the residents. There's all these kind of bizarre rules. There's something going on in this apartment house thing that's just a little bit off. And then this one was really fun too. I liked it a lot. And the two books that I have not read that I purchased in May, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Obviously this is the prequel to The Hunger Games. I'm still on a list for the audiobook for this. I just haven't had the nerve to pick it up 
and just read it. So I'm waiting for the audiobook to come in. Again, this follows President Snow. I'm sure you've heard about it. I'm not going to talk about it too much. <laughs> and Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. I read Scythe, I think in April, and I had to get this one, which funnily enough, I have not read it yet, but I did enjoy Scythe so much. Scythe was one of those books. It's a YA dystopian. Again, I'm, he I'm sure you've heard of it. Scythe was one of those books that I was like, no, I'm not gonna read that. It was too hyped. It didn't sound like something I wanted. It's a dystopian, which I don't really read that much, but it was so good. 10 out of 10, worth the hype, loved it, read it in a day. So, so I ended up picking up the sequel Thunderhead to that. Then we have June. I picked up 11 books in June. A couple of them were from my used bookstore, which was opening back up and had all these protocols in place and I wanted to support them. Um, and a couple of them were new. The first two that I want to show you are these two, Between the World and Me by ta -Nehisi Coates and I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. Obviously the Black Lives Matter movement and George Floyd's murder prompted me to pick these up. I was seeing a lot of great recommendations for anti-racism and nonfiction work surrounding Black Lives Matter and that sort of material. So I picked up these two. I have read them both. I would recommend listening to the audiobook of both of them because the authors read them. These were both very excellent and very eye-opening and definitely would recommend them. Along that same vein, I picked up The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I have also since read this. This is a fiction work, but it definitely has themes of growing up black in a world made for whiteness where white beauty is the standard. It follows a young girl who wishes she could have blue eyes because that is what is beautiful. Toni Morrison is amazing. I definitely want to read more of her works. I loved this one. I finally picked up the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy by Kevin Kwan. I read this one last year or I listened to it via audiobook but I never picked up a copy of it and I ended up watching the movie again I think because I love that movie. It's such a feel-good movie and it reminded me of how much I wanted to continue on with the series. So I saw all of these at my used bookstore in these cute new covers. So I picked those up and I have since read all of them. They are so fun but also a commentary on I think like consumerism. I really did enjoy all of these. I think the first one is still my favorite but the last one was really good as well. Then I picked up Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I absolutely adore Elizabeth Acevedo's work ever since I read her first published work, The Poet X. Um, actually, I listened to a lot of her audiobooks. I think they are fantastic. This follows two teenagers, one of them growing up in Brooklyn and one of them growing up in the Dominican Republic. And their father ends up dying tragically in a plane crash and they don't know about each other. So this novel is kind of about them dealing with that loss and that grief, but also finding out about each other. Oh, so good. Elizabeth Acevedo's writing is probably some of my favorite Definitely one of my favorites in YA, but probably some of my favorites overall. She is a master. I grabbed Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I have Strange the Dreamer, so I saw this at my used bookstore for super cheap. Figured I would pick it up, get to it. Maybe I can just marathon the series. It's gonna be glorious. Earlier this year, I read Children of Blood and Bone and enjoyed it. So I ended up picking up Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is a young adult fantasy series. It was everywhere two years ago. So I'm sure you have heard about it, but so much fun. The first book was really fast paced and interesting. So I do want to dive into this, even though it's significantly shorter. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm going to get to it soon. Then I picked up Party of Two by Jasmine Guillory. This is an adult romance. Jasmine Guillory, again, one of my favorite romance writers. I think she... For someone who doesn't read a ton of romance, she is the perfect mix of the romance plot as well as like individual characters. Like she definitely develops each part of the romance, each person in the romance 
um, very nicely on their own and I really really enjoy her work so I figured when this came out I would give it a go I haven't read it yet but when I'm in the mood for some romance I will pick it up then I picked up a Zadie Smith Grand Union stories this is a collection of short stories written by Zadie Smith I have not read any of her stuff she tends to write literary fiction and I haven't picked anything up but she is a well-known well-loved author um, and I figured I would start with some of her stories I saw this recommended at my local bookstore and it was on like a table of recommended reads and I thought it looked interesting and I figured I would pick it up haven't read it yet very excited to get to it it's very short and it's short stories I need to pick it up then in July unfortunately there is another dip in or spike I guess in the situation so I wasn't going out to bookstores that much um, I did in the very beginning of July hit up my local used bookstore and I picked up two more classics I picked up The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood figured I would finally give this one a go and I like this cover <laughs> I don't know why but it's very iconic and then I picked up Don Quixote by Cervantes this is a mm, chunk of a book translated from Spanish. My boyfriend and I watched the movie The Platform, which is a horror, horror-y dystopian foreign film on Netflix. Basically, this book is mentioned and referenced a lot in that movie, and it made me want to read it. I also a long time ago watched a video done by a YouTuber. I cannot think of his name right now. I can see his face. I will link it down below um, where he read all of the books recommended by the sh by the protagonist in you and this was on there and after he read it he said this was his favorite book ever which i thought was really interesting that that happened so it also made me intrigued i don't know anything about this book but hopefully maybe this winter when i really want a long chunky boy i will get to this one in august i picked up a couple of new releases i picked up burn our bodies down by rory power and i killed zoe spanos by kit Frick, both of which I have read. I actually just finished this one. This is a YA mystery-ish kind of horror. Not really horror in my opinion, but her other book was horror. It follows our main character who has grown up just with her mother and her and her mother don't have a good relationship so she runs away to find her grandmother and there are creepy weird things going on with the grandma and at the house that the grandma is at so interesting things start to happen and it was fine I didn't like it as much as Wilder Girls but it was it was good I will definitely be picking up more Rory Power in the future and then I read I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick and picked this one up and I actually listened to this I pretty much picked this up solely because it had a podcast element ever since I read Sadie by Courtney Summers I have been dying for more true crime podcasts within a fictional book. I know that's a very specific thing to look for but if you have any recommendations please link them down below. There is one that just came out that I just looked for the audio for. Um, I think I've got it on hold called The Night Swim. If you have any other podcasts within a book recommendations please I am dying to recreate the feeling that I had when I was listening to Sadie because I loved it so much anyways this one wasn't as good as Sadie the podcast wasn't as prevalent as I thought it was going to be um, but it's a mystery about a girl who is nannying in like the Hamptons for the summer for this really wealthy family and she finds out that she looks very similar to a girl who disappeared last summer and people are really weird about it and she's trying to unravel what happened to this girl that looks so much like her. I went on a little bit of a classic binge the last couple months I guess. We'll wait until you get to next month but I picked up The Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. There's been a lot of hype around the book and the movie and it made me a little more interested in it so I do want to get to this very soon. I also in July picked up Stamped from the Beginning The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by Ibram X. Kendi. Um, this is something that I reserved on audiobook back in June because I thought I would just want to listen to it but then when the audiobook came I realized I would want 
to like take notes in this text or highlight things. So I returned the audiobook, put it back on hold. It's still on hold, but I have a physical copy for when it comes in um, from the library. Okay, and then we have Oh, my biggest month so far. I'm, it's behind me. I'm afraid to count the books. Okay, hold on. Okay, 16. Mm -hmm. 16 books in September. Some of them were pre-orders because I was trying to kind of get myself set for the rest of the year so I wasn't buying up books while I was also buying up Christmas presents and stuff. But I was trying to get myself set for through the rest of the year a little bit so I wasn't purchasing new books and stuff when I wanted to save some money for Christmas presents and things like that. I don't know. I always kind of have to budget out my Christmas stuff a couple of months so it's not just one giant paycheck in December that's just gone from my life. Anyways, you don't care. I'm gonna show you the book. There's a lot of adult fantasy on this list because <laughs> I read, I finally read Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, the first book, The Final Empire, and I decided why have I not been reading more adult fantasy? And I also picked up Liza Locke Lamora in the fifth season, all within this time frame. So there's a lot of adult fantasy and I'm looking so forward to reading these. So we've got Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. I have heard such wonderful, fun, fantastic things about this book. It is like a mm, questy kind of D&D campaign -y novel that follows like a band of old mercenaries that are like, you know, out of that line of work, retired, but they're going to save the main character's daughter. Um, and I was a little skeptical at first because I don't like fantasy stories that don't have any women in them at all. So this sounds sounded kind of damsel in distressy, but from the reviews and the talk that I've heard, it's not really like that. Um, and I've also heard that the characters are based off of like rock stars from the 1970s is like kind of the vibe. I don't know, I'm so curious, people love this book even people that don't read high fantasy at all love this book so I'm going to jump into this very soon then I picked up the rage of dragons by Evan winter I've heard good things about this it's been hyped up the past couple of months on YouTube I think I first heard of this from Daniel Green so I'll try and find the video and link it down below or I'll link his channel if you are interested he does a lot of high fantasy adult fantasy stuff um, but honestly one of the main reasons that I picked this up is because it's written by a black author and I want to support black authors in fantasy spaces because you do not see that unfortunately very often so I do want to read this very soon I've heard it's fun fabulous fantastic all the F words. I picked up a paperback copy of Reaper at the Gates by Sabah Tahir. This is the third book in the Ember in the Ashes trilogy. Have not read it yet. The fourth one comes out soon and I follow Sabah on, on Twitter and she keeps talking about how devastating the last book's gonna be so who knows when I'll get to Reaper. <laughs> oh we have a not adult fantasy or fantasy. I picked up Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. I love Nina LaCour's writing and I think this is kind of a mystery, mysterious twist on her usual contemporary style. Um, and hi, look at this cover. I'm gonna read it so soon. Ooh, another one that I've been hearing so much about the past couple months on booktube. Um, maybe I've just followed more adult fantasy people. So now I'm hearing more about these things. Jade City by Fonda Lee. It's the winner of the World Fantasy Award in 2018. Heard this is like really fast paced and you get into the story really quickly. So I do want to pick this up. I think the second one is out and maybe the third one is about to come out. I've heard really good things about this. I think this follows a like multi POV, but it the main premise is that there is like a split between people that can use magic and people that can't and then the person obviously someone that supposed to cannot use magic it can so that kind of is the inciting incident um i don't know too much more about it but i'm 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 so excited i've got the audiobook on hold so i'll probably wait to read it until that comes in but yeah i'm so heckin excited holy crap <laughs> i put the other mistborn books in here because i had all my brandon sanderson books together so i guess it's just 14 books it's not 16 i've owned these 
I didn't purchase these within the last year. <laughs> so I did, however, purchase Elantris and Warbreaker. Um, these are two of Brandon Sanderson's standalones in his like bigger Cosmere world. If you are into high fantasy, you probably know about this. Um, I didn't know too much about it. I just heard a lot of hype around Mistborn. I've heard mixed things about Elantris and good things about Warbreaker. We're gonna read some Sanderson. I also picked up the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, which is the first book in the Stormlight, I Stormlight Archives, which is like a 12 book series that I cannot wait to get into. I really wanna read this right now, but I've got to finish City of Brass. But I picked this one up because, hi, I read Mistborn finally, and I realized I really gel with Sanderson, so why not pick up the rest of his work? Well, why not try his other stuff as well? <laughs> Let's do, here's my last adult high fantasy, The Last Wish by Aunt, and oh gosh, I'm Polish and I should know how to pronounce this. Andre Sap Sapkowski, Sapkowski? Hi, embarrassing, I'm very Polish. It's The Witcher, it's The Last Witch. I watched the pilot of The Witcher show when it first came out with my boyfriend and I was intrigued but unimpressed. I think I was home alone one weekend, um, like for a long weekend. My boyfriend decided to go camping with some friends. I stayed home, took care of our animals. I decided to watch the rest of The Witcher. It's like eight episodes, so I watched them all over three days. And I decided that I wanna try the book. This is like a weird, it's like a collection of short stories to begin with. There's two collections of short stories and then there's like a six book series. But I have heard that you can't jump into the series. Like you should read the collections of short stories. So I picked this one up. This is gorgeous. I'm gonna read it soon. I'm thinking about doing a review of the first season of The Witcher as like someone who never played the game, someone who never read the book. So I wanna do that. I wanna rewatch it and maybe take notes and review it and then read the book and then compare maybe? We'll see. <laughs> okay, two more books I purchased in September. The Silvered Serpents by Rashani Chashki. The second book in the Gilded Wolves trilogy, which I thought it was a duology, so I'm a little disappointed that this is the middle book, but it's fine. We get more content, which is always good. Um, this is a historical fantasy that takes place in Paris in like the 1800s, but there's magic and it's like a heisty uh, group novel and I love it. It was so good. I love The Gilded Wolf. You'll hear a lot of mixed reviews for that book. I adored it, so I can't wait to jump into this. I don't want to get into the plot of that because of spoilers. So finally, <laughs> oh fine. Well, I have a couple, I have three more books left. I have too many piles around me. So Lord above, Lord help us all. How many books do I really have in September? 14. So this isn't the final book. I'll get into my pre-orders that can, came out in October in a second. This is the final book that came out in September. Okay, you don't care. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. Paolini, Paolini. Hi, I love Christopher Paolini. The Aragon series I read in like middle school, or most of it, those, those books came out so slow, but the first two, three, uh, middle school and high school I read it so good I know there, there are a lot of qualms with that book series but I adored it I loved his writing style it was like an adventure fantasy very Tolkien inspired it's like the Tolkien for YA readers and like middle grade readers so when I heard he was coming out with an epic sci-fi space adventure I bought it because I want to try it and see how his writing has grown, see his writing in a different world. Like I'm so intrigued by this, except the only thing I hate is that it just says Paolini on the spine. The book's not called Paolini, it's called To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. This is like a space odyssey about a girl who is on a mission to an abandoned planet and she finds an alien relic that awakens things and starts a war. Um. I'm here for it. Okay, then I have three books that I pre-ordered that all came out on October 6th. So I have them here to show you. First one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I love this cover. I don't know why people hate it. This is an adult historical fiction, paranormally kind of thing. I'm sure you've heard about it. Everyone will not stop talking about this book and including me. I'm really excited to read this about a girl back in the... 1700s 
17th century Paris who decides to bargain her soul for an immortal life. But the caveat is that she, no one will remember her. And then I believe someone does remember her and that's kind of where we are starting off. I've heard it's heartbreaking. I'm ready. Seems like the perfect autumn read. Of course, gotta support my girl Lee Bardugo and pick up The Lives of Saints. Hi, this is a freaking gorgeous book. Hello, look at these illustrations. Okay, okay, there we go. This is a collection of like fably short stories around the saints of the Grishaverse. Love that love this cover think it's really interesting love the illustrations they are very short stories can't wait to get into more of one of my favorite universes of all time okay then finally last but not least one of my favorite authors tana french released a new mystery called the searcher and hi i'm so excited for this i had no idea she was releasing a new book until like two months ago this is i don't think it's a dublin murder squad which is her like companion series that follows usually it's one minor or side character in the first book will be the main character in the next and then the, a minor character will be the main character and so on and so forth but i think this follows a chicago cop that retires to like a b-side irish town um and there's a mystery going on there that he gets wrapped up in about a murder i believe and i love tana french's writing she does great character work definitely more on the mystery side of the mystery thriller category also she does do a lot of detective stories so if detective based mysteries aren't your thing you might not like her but I would give it a go because she is fabulous wow that was a lot of books how many total 37 books in the last six months that's not too bad actually so I can't wait to jump into some of these I hope you guys enjoyed this 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 haul I hope you maybe saw a new book that you might be interested in now um I'm gonna leave you with that and I will see you next time goodbye Thank you.